-hmm. And that's one of the things that I really, I really wanted with this was for it to be a, a hand to reach out to, you know, the young adults and, you know, the adults that are going to read this book to be like, yeah, I, I get it. You know, there are people who get it. Like, we've all gone through stuff. And there's um, a portion in the book where Alvara has reactions to things. And it's, you know, all the characters have their own problems. And Alvara's is, you know, she was a warrior from a very young age. Um, and she talks about, you know how she like disassociates or has flashbacks um she is very protective of Kier to a very fierce degree um and she has a lot of issues with not feeling adequate with what she's able to do as far as protecting Kier and stuff and that's you know that's a whole other thing on itself and then we have Cade who is, you know, Olvara's second in general, he has to deal with, you know, having his head kind of messed with at one point, and then there are other points where, um, you know, we learn that Cade can never go home to his home court. He, he can't go back. So he also has to deal with not having a home and also not feeling at home anywhere else. Okay, welcome to Living the Next Chapter. I have an author with me today, and we both have a love for amazing pets, by the way, which is great. I found a, a YouTube link, and I went down a little rabbit hole, and uh, my guest today uh, is Parker Toronto. Parker is a an author, and some new stuff coming up in the future. We're excited about this, and uh, we just wanted to welcome Parker to the podcast. Welcome, Parker. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. This is great. I love new authors. I love people who are creating something. And uh, you have something coming up. It's awesome. First, before we jump into all that, let's let everybody know where you are in the world. I am in New Mexico. New Mexico. I'm up here in Canada, so we're quite a distance away from each other. Yeah. Um, how's the weather? Everything good? Uh, I mean, it's actually been pretty cold lately as far as, you know, down south gets. So, I mean... It's definitely better than Pennsylvania winters, so I can't complain. There you go. Okay, so there's always an upside, right? Yep. That's right. Good. Well, if you ever want a bunch of snow, come up here to Canada and we'll we'll fill you up. You can take some home with you. Um, we got lots. So uh, that's great. Parker, tell me a little bit about your author journey. How did all this start? When did you wake up one day and go, you know what? Uh, I got a few hours. I'm going to write a book. I'm just going to be an author. I'm just going to do that. Is that how it happened? I've always been very creative. I've always been a very creative person. I was the kind of kid where I would get upset at five years old because somebody would hand me cheap crayons and a coloring book. And I'm like, no, I need Crayola and I need blank paper. Um, so like I was really into art, really into drawing. And then around, I would say second grade, I really got into, um, reading and I got my hands on a copy of Romeo and Juliet and I was reading at a 16 year old reading level in second grade um and then it kind of just took off from there at one point a little bit later on I think I might have been in like fifth grade I had read um these books by E.D. Baker and I like was obsessed with it I was like I want to write I want to make stories like this I want to and I like sat down with um like, all the books that I basically had, and I basically taught myself the formatting for writing and everything else, and just was like, okay, I'm going to take this and I'm going to run. <laughs> okay, so Parker, something I hear from a lot of authors is they seem to say, that just like you just did, when I was when I was younger, I liked to read, I read a lot of books, and now I'm an author. What do you think the connection is between loving to read and loving to write? That seems... It seems like a common thing, but I've never asked anybody this question. How, what do you think the connection is between loving to read and, and being an author? I think that the connection is wanting to share kind of what's inside of your head. Because I've always been big into like world building and fantasy building. And for me, when I had started this project, I was like, I'm going to write it. I'm going to write it primarily for myself. But I also want to share 
everything that I've created and everything that I have seen in my head and everything else, I want to share that with everybody else. And I really think that's what the the um, connection is, because when you're reading, you know, you get sucked into that book that you're reading. And with, you know, writing, it's kind of like the opposite of, well, I'm going to bring everybody into my world. Yeah. And then when you're writing fiction, that even opens up another door to go places that you can't go in your normal existence, everyday life. You can go anywhere you want. There's no rules, right? So I like I like that side of, of writing as well. Yeah. So tell me about some of the authors that inspire you, either growing up or currently, somebody that you've always looked up to and you're like, either you want to write like them or they just there's just something about them that makes you a better person reading their book. Who, who really inspires you? Christopher Pellini of the Aragon series. I've said this I don't know how many times, but that was... One of my biggest things growing up was the Aragon series because I like characters that I can relate to. And, you know, with Aragon, you have this, you know, rural farm boy who, um, you know, his existence basically changes the course of everything. Like, if he didn't exist and, you know, find the dragon egg and go on this amazing journey, you know things wouldn't have changed for the better. And I like I find that a lot in a lot of the books that I enjoy, like uh, Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass, the main character, Feyre. You know, it's, it's very similar. If, you know, she didn't come into the storyline, you know, everything would still be really, really messed up. And, you know, like I just, I, I love that so much. Do you ever do the thing where you read the book and then sometimes the, you know, the movie will come out or the series or whatever will happen? And then you, you're like, mm, I, am yeah. I going to watch this or am I just going to stay true to the written one? Because I know for my, in my family, um, there's always this letdown when you watch it on, watch it on like a film or a TV show. And then you're like, that's not how the book goes. No, 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 no. The book goes left here. It doesn't go right. What are you doing? Does that happen to you? <laughs> yeah. Okay. It, it happens to me all the time to the point where we'll, we'll watch the movie, right? I'll be like, oh, my God, I love this book so much, you know, like um, like with the Aragon movie or like Lord of the Rings and stuff. Yeah. Um, and I'll sit there and I'll just be like, that's not how it happened. <laughs> that's not how it happened. And then my wife will look at me and be like, listen, you wanted me to watch this movie with you? <laughs> you want me to sit here and watch it? You're going to have to shut yeah. up. <laughs> yeah yeah that's that sounds very familiar um that's how it is in our home too so yeah because you're like yelling at the screen like that's not right you know so um yeah i wouldn't i don't think that we'd do well in a theater because we'd be yelling up and people are like would you be quiet you know so but it's not right it's not how it goes anyways um yeah so do you think did you do you think your book would would someday end up on a screen? Is it kind of written that way, or what do you think? I mean, I would I would very much love it if it became you know a movie or like a Netflix series and stuff. Um, I mean, I think it definitely would be adaptable, but I would also be one of those people where I'd be like, listen, if you're gonna take this and make this into a movie, I've got to be there for like the casting and everything because I'm a very like a very sound thing of how this needs to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it started with you, so it's hard to hand that off to somebody and be like, no, nah, it's not right. That's not right. I'm going to pick out all the wardrobe. I'm going to do make sure all the lines are correct. I'm going to get all the actors. I'm going to make I'm, do everything. Yeah, that's that's kind of how I would do it, too. Um, okay, so we've kind of... <laughs> yeah, right? I, we, I You know, this is all my book coming to life on the screen. I am going to be the one to have final say on everything. Yeah. Right. They would be so. like, we're going to adapt it to the script. I'm like, you already have the script. It's right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's right here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you can buy it for me right now if you want to buy a copy. Um, I love it. Okay. So, so we've kind of talked around the book a little bit. Um, let's now start talking about the book itself. Um, when did you start writing this? I, um, let's start with that. I started writing it, I think it was like mid or late last year. Okay. Um, and it's, honestly, it's kind of taken over my life a little bit. 
Because, like, I was I was posting on Facebook, I'm like, I like fantasy an absolutely normal amount, and it's, like, the most recent purchases I've made, and it's just, like, fantasy clothing and accessories. There you go. You, you're getting ready. You're getting started. Get ready for the movie, right? You're just getting ready. I love it. Yeah, okay, so what's the title of the nice. book? Let's let's share that with everybody. What's it called? It is called A Rain of... Uh, yeah, blah, hi, I can't talk today. A Realm of Flame and Ruin. Hmm. Okay. Can you give us a synopsis? What's going on in this? Bring us in. So, so it sets the, it takes place in a country that I have created called Arias. Okay. And in Arias, there are different territories. You have the human territories, which is made up of completely human villages. There is no fae, you know, they are, they just kind of don't go there, and the humans have kind of been there long enough where um, they've been left alone, and they're kind of just like, mm, all the old people are crazy. There's no fae. <laughs> um, and, and that's very much how our main character, Kier, thinks of things. She um, turns thief to survive because she lost her mother very young, and she basically gets caught and the village elders kind of get together and they're like we're just gonna go sacrifice you to the fae so they leave the other people we actually like alone so she's taken out into fae territory essentially and she gets taken into my adaption of the wild hunt where the fae hunt human for sport because Mm -hmm. in the world that I've created, humans are referred to in the book as livestock with the intelligence to communicate. Wow. There's a title for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so she goes and she's running from the Fae, and that is how we meet our other main character, Alvara. She is the lady of the flame court, and she is preparing for a civil war with the other fey territories. And she finds Kier and is just like, yep, this is, this is the ticket. So she scoops Kier up and takes her into the court of flames and is just like, yeah, you're part of this whole mess that I'm creating now, and I'm going to give you a really important position. and..." All the other courts are just appalled mm. by it. And it kickstarts this entire civil war, and that the civil war and them trying to navigate the diplomatic problems and their personal issues that are tied into it is basically the entire rust of the book. Wow. So, okay, so what is what is the overarching message of the book? Is Can you summarize that for us? Without giving anything away. It's really hard. Yeah. <laughs> there are so many different messages in the book. Okay. Um, honestly, I would have to say is the overall message is don't let anything define you. Okay. Can you expand on that? So we have Kier, which is the main character of the entire story. Like, she is the top main character, and she is defined by a lot of things. She is a thief. She is, you know... A human, she is not so human later on. Um, like, there are a lot of labels that get attached to her. Um, mm-hmm. And that's something that she has to deal with a lot is, well, I'm defined by all these things that I am and that people say that I am. And that that at some point she just kind of like throws up her hands and is just like, you know what? Fine. Call me a monster. Call me, you know, the nightmare of the South. Call me this. Call me that. You know, I know who I am and that's what's important. Okay, so Parker, everything you just said there sounds very familiar in today's context. Is there is there any part of this story where you see yourself? You see yourself in a mirror and go, "Uh I identify with this character. Or are you kind of blended through the entire book? Well, the funny thing is, 
actually that Kier is based on myself and my own struggles, and Alvara is actually based on my wife. There you go. Okay, see, now we're unpacking this a little bit. Okay, so let's let's just let's oh, just sit on that for a second. Can you expand on a little bit of this then? Because I think this helps people when they're reading. They're like, "Oh, oh, now I get it. I, I get I get where we're going here." So mm -hmm. let's talk about that a little bit more. What are some of these struggles? So I did not have the greatest upbringing. I was brought up in a household where abuse of all sorts were normal. I was, you know, I had absentee parents, I had um, depression, anxiety, I have CPTSD, um, and these are all things that kind of carry over to Kier. Um, Kier does not have a father that she knows of, she lost her mother very young, um, Kier is traumatized by all of the events of her life, and when Kier has, you know panic attacks or uh, trauma responses that are actually written throughout the book, those are actually how I experience things. And I, writ I wrote that into the book, not just for, you know, authenticity's sake, but to show that, you know, it's when you go through shit, you, this is what happens and this is kind of how you deal with things afterwards. So this is not just a book because you wanted to write a book, right? This is not just some throwaway story that you just had sitting in your on your desk one day and you're like, I'm just going to write a book because I'm bored. There's something to this, right? There's a message yep. here. When I originally started writing this, right. um, it was actually part of the process of healing my inner teen. Um, so I've been going through therapy and everything else for a while now, and, um, you know, I did the whole heal the inner child thing, but, like, the inner teen was still angry. The inner teen was still, you know, really upset that nobody believed that we could do, you know, the things that we said we wanted to do. No one helped us do the things that we said we wanted to do. So we were like, okay, we are old enough now, and we have the ability now. We are going to go, and we are going to do all the things that we said that we were going to do at 14, and we're going to do it with pride. Okay, so I got a, I have a, a little bit of a curveball question for you, Parker. If you were listening to this podcast, based on who you are and what you've been through, and you're listening right now, okay, you're not the one talking, but you're the one listening to our conversation, what would you need to hear right now? And how would this book help that person? That you're not alone. You're not alone, as alone as you think that you are. Um, depression and trauma, there are very... Mm -hmm lonely existence and my book is very much the fantasy companion to that because it shows that because I didn't know that a lot of the things that I did or the things that I reacted to the way that I did were because of the things that I went to I was floundering around in the dark but I have a, a hero you know, and she's she's messed up, but she's still trying to do the right thing. And that sounds like life, right? From all different perspectives, we're all kind of living this messed up existence, all of us, to some degree. Some some have it a lot worse than others, obviously, but we're all kind of living this. So I can I can anticipate, Parker, that people are going to be able to identify with some of the characters in this in this book. And then get, get even get inspired maybe and even just kind of some help and support to fe not feel so alone just by going through and reading this book. And that's one of the things that I really, I really wanted with this was for it to be a, a hand to reach out to, you know, the young adults and, you know, the adults that are going to read this book to be like, yeah, I, I get it. You know, there are people who get it. Like, we've all gone through stuff. And there's um, a portion in the book where Alvara has reactions to things. And it's, you know, all the characters have their own problems. And Alvara's is, you know, she was a warrior from a very young age. Um, and she talks about, you know how she, like, disassociates or has flashbacks 
Um, she is very protective of Kier to a very fierce degree. Um, and she has a lot of issues with not feeling adequate with what she's able to do as far as protecting Kier and stuff. And that's, you know, that's a whole other thing on itself. And then we have Cade, who is, you know, Olvara's second in general. He has to deal with, you know, having his head kind of messed with at one point, and then there are other points where, um, you know, we learn that Cade can never go home to his home court. He he can't go back. So he also has to deal with not having a home and also not feeling at home anywhere else. Love it. Love it. Um, so so tell me a little bit more then about about the writing process. What kind of things did you learn about yourself? when you were writing this book? Well, I learned that it's really easy to hurt my own feelings. Because <laughs> I'll sit there. Oh, oh, wait, okay, wait, back up. Do that, say that again. What, what do you mean by that? So what I mean is, <laughs> I, get, I get really attached to the characters, not just because they're kind of self-inserts, but because I just really get attached to a lot of the characters that I make in general. So they kind of take on a life of their own. So I'll be writing, right? And I'll just be, like, it's like a movie playing in my head and I'm just dictating what I'm seeing. And, like, you know, there'll be a really emotional scene and I'm just sitting there and I'm crying and snotting and I'm just like, I can't believe they did that! (laughs) So you're kind of a spectator for your own book. Mm Mm-hmm. That's an interesting way to look at it. I like that. That feels like more fun for you. It, it, well, fun and sad at the same time, but yeah. Cause like, I had somebody who had asked me um, if I plan out my plot and if I, you know, if I plan things out to, like, the little details and stuff, and I was just like, I mean, there are some, like, phrases or there are some uh, scenes that I'll, like, think up of, but, like, when I'm writing, I write very organically, so it's, like, me having music on that's probably too loud, you know, I will just sit there and I'm just like daydreaming and my, you know, I'm tapping on the keyboard and I'll be like, oh, this is a really good spot to put this in. So I'm going to put it there. But like, other than that, I don't, I don't plan anything out. The story just kind of goes how the story goes. Did you have any point when you're writing, when you got a little bit stuck and you didn't know where to go next? Oh my goodness. Yeah. I actually had one where I was like, it was like the midpoint of the book, I think. And Kier was just kind of fed up with everything and just was like, you know what, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. And she goes home to the human lands. She goes home to the human territories. And she doesn't know what else to do, but she can't be there. And I really was not sure if I liked those two scenes. Not only because it was emotionally challenging, because I had to stop at one point, because I had gotten myself so, like, upset and depressed during the process. I was like, I I just can't write anymore right now. Um, But, like, also, I just wasn't sure how I felt about that portion of the story in general, and I wasn't sure where to go with it after that. part of writing, I'd anticipate you'd want somebody to read this along with you and kind of be a part of your journey. Did you share this? writing with anyone before you send it off to be published? So I actually have two beta readers um, who okay. are amazing. So so they've been reading along and stuff. But then I also have my wife. And I think my wife at this point has become more emotionally invested in these characters than I have. Um, because <laughs> they're my editor as well. Because they've done freelance editing and what have you. So... They, I'll write a couple chapters and they'll edit them and we'll sit and we'll go over things and stuff. And I'll get stuck at plot points or what have you and I'll sit there and I'll just start talking about um, the characters and stuff. And they're like, funny, you cannot be giving me spoilers. Like, I I don't want spoilers. You can't be telling me this. I can't help you. (laughs) (laughs) So so the feedback coming back to you from beta readers and your wife, what are they saying about the book? What do they love? They really love the fact that it's not a traditional romance and the fact of, you know, it's not, okay. you know, a heteronormative couple. They, they love the fact that, you know, it is a sapphic romance. 
Um, they really love how the characters are built. Um, they, I've been told that, you know, they really like my monsters that I've made in the book. <laughs> um, but overall, <laughs> like, my, the biggest, the biggest compliment that I've gotten so far is making people cry or hurting their feelings with certain scenes. They're like, the scene was so sad. I'm like, good, it's supposed to be sad. Or they'll come to me and they'll be like, I hate this character. I don't like this character. I'm like, good, you shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so does this open the door? Once this is out, like it's not even, as of recording time, it's not even available right now to purchase today. It's coming, and we'll talk about it in a minute. But um, does this, writing this book, does this open the door for you to, to more? Or what do you think? Have you been bitten by the author bug? So I've been thinking about it quite a lot, and I've decided that I'm going to carry uh, this book over into a series. So we're going to have the Realm series. But recently I've also been looking into Kindle Vela. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it. Um, but no. it's uh, a serialized uh, publication method. So you might be familiar with more with other serialized things like Webtoon or what have you. Where, you know, an episode will come out and you pay coins and you, you know, you read it. Um, I've been playing with the idea of running another series next to, alongside um, my Realm series, which will be nice. pretty much strictly on Kindle. So Dawn. there's lots more coming for you. There's lots more coming. There's lots more coming. Wow. It's amazing. Um just listening to you, Parker, I'm, I'm so I'm, I'm impressed with how how well you've put this all together, and you know it's got to be inspiring. And I I can't wait to see you post on online when you're holding the book in your hands. It arrives at your door, and you have your copies, and it's official. Like it's it's real. People can buy it. That's probably like when I talk to authors. That moment seems to be so special. I hope you document it for us. And share it with us when you open the box or however it gets to you, because we've all been following along in the journey, and now we get to see you finally arrive. It arrive in your hands. I, I hope you get to share that I with us. What are you looking forward to when this book is ready? So the biggest thing that I'm looking forward to when the book is ready is uh, sending out signed copies. So everybody who has worked on the project. Whether they were an editor, a beta reader, whether they've been an illustrator for me during this time, um, they're all getting signed copies. I mean, I, I decided that yes. early on that they're all getting signed copies. And then the other biggest thing that I'm going to be excited to do is because obviously I have my digital book tour. Um, but I'm also going to be setting up and doing some physical events um, in the local area. And that's probably Good. like my biggest, you know, I what I wanted to do, like, on my author bucket list. Like, I, I'm i doing, I'm going to do physical events, and I'm going to sign books, and I'm going to talk to the people who like the books. And, like, I just, I want to do that so badly. I'm just like, I'm going to Gee, when you can see the color in the eyes of your reader, that's amazing, right? Because otherwise they're just, like, out there buying it online, or you never actually see them when they walk up to the table and you get to talk to them one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. Like, what a great moment, right? So, that's exciting. It really is. So, how else are you promoting the book? You're going to do some book tours. You're going to do, while well, you're doing a podcast. Do you have any other plans to, to, to sell the book? So, I'm very active on social media. Um, I've been posting it to my personal TikTok. I've got an author Instagram, which is all just book-related stuff. Um, I've been posting it to my Twitter and what have you. So, like, that, that's pretty much just how I'm promoting it at this point. Um, mostly because I am an indie author, so obviously, you know, I can't do a whole uh, publis publicity campaign and what have you. But I've been reaching out to, like, book talkers. I've been reaching out to podcasts. I've been reaching out to pretty much anybody who will listen. Just, like, can, can I come talk about my book? <laughs> Well, that's why we have the podcast, and Parker, I'm I'm thrilled to have you on. And um, the one thing, too, while we're chatting, just for those that are watching, there's been a steady parade of dogs between my dogs behind me, your <laughs> dogs 
I see two right now. Yeah. I've seen like three. There's well, there's three now. Yes. There's three of them. So, we've got, okay. We've got Ivy, okay. Fish, and Harley. I have a shepherd too. His name is Duke. And he's, he usually wants to play ball every time I sit in this chair. And I'm like, not right now. So I can see you have a whole cheering squad there with you. That's amazing. And the one thing I like, Parker, and we talked earlier about you uh, finding you on YouTube and, you know, with all the, the different uh, pets and animals that you've been helping and ho rehoming and taking care of. That tells me a lot about you because people who love animals and animals who love people like you, that's a great uh, that's a great way to tell if you're a good person or not, because um, animals just have this sense about who they trust and who they, you know, who they want to be around. And to see these, <laughs> you see your pets coming through the doorway. It uh, it says a lot about you. And um, I just wanted to kind of acknowledge that because um, I get the sense from you that you're you're somebody who really cares a lot about people and you really want, I think in this book, you really want to help some people. Like I said, you didn't write this book just because you were bored on a Saturday and you had nothing to do. You have a message and your message, Parker, really matters. And I'm really hoping that this book takes off for you and that people buy the book. They come back, they give you the reviews online or wherever they're going to purchase it. And they really come out and support you and, and encourage you to keep writing because you're doing something I've never done. And I'm, I'm inspired just talking to you. So this is really, really great. How do people find you, Parker? And then like the, you said a pre uh, release date's coming. Um, and then you have kind of an idea of when the book's going to be ready. Our show notes will be up to date, whether you listen to this like soon or in the future, our show notes will be up to date so people can come and buy the book. But just give us a little bit of the details about the timing of the book and everything. So people who listen to the podcast soon will know what's happening. So around February 14th, we're going to be having our cover reveal, which is where um, everybody's going to be able to see the official, you know, front cover of the book, um, which I'm really excited excited for because one of my favorite illustrators is doing it they've been doing nice. such an amazing job um and then shortly after that we're gonna have pre-orders um so that'll be opening up probably around the end of february and then beginning okay. of march i'm hoping to have it officially come out okay and where is it going to be available to purchase so it's going to be available through amazon in both digital and physical copies and then I'm also okay. looking into having it on, like, iBook and Google Book because I want it to be as widely available as possible. Um, so that way people aren't just restricted to, you know, throwing money at Amazon. Okay. Yeah. Is there going to be an audio version of the book at all? I would love for there to be an audio version of it. Um, it kind of really depends on how things go for the book. Um, I would, I would super, super okay. love for there to be an audio version, but one thing that I am currently working on is I am looking into, like, audio clips, uh, of the book, so, like, very, uh, emotional or, like, you know, some of my favorite quotes from the book, um, they'll probably be put into, like, audios for, like, my TikTok and what have you. Okay. Great. So people can get a sense of the book and hear a little bit. That's great. That's awesome. It's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Good. And then let everybody know, too, Parker, where can everybody find you? Where are you most active? If I have a question and I want you to, and I, I would love to hear back from you, where should I go first so that I can get your attention? So if you absolutely want to grab my attention, you should definitely go through Instagram, uh, which is Parker underscore Toronto, and then also Twitter which is um, Bunny Boy, spelled B-O-I-93. Uh, I'm also very okay. active on uh, TikTok, which is also the Bunny Boy 93. Um, I have a lot of interactive stuff on there, and you can embarrassingly see some of my early character creations and what have you that I've done through uh, TikTok. Um, and then, of course, I do have a Facebook page, but I'm not super active on it. Okay. That is just Uncle okay. Parker's Toronto. Yeah, it's always nice to kind of know where you're most active. And because if I send a message somewhere where you're not there all the time, I might be waiting and I'm like, oh, where's Parker? Um, but yeah, if I know where you are, then I can go there first. That's awesome. Um, Parker, give give everybody just 
This is your chance to sell your book. I'm going to step out of the way, and I want you to talk directly to the people listening to us today. Tell them why they why they need this book, and you get to do your little commercial spiel for your book. Are you ready for this? Okay, think about this for a second. I know you're ready because you're you're an author. You're always ready. Okay, I know you got to buy all this dog food for all these great dogs behind you. So we need to sell some books, right? We got to sell some books. Yeah. We need some toys for these dogs. So, yeah. um, are you ready for a little commercial spiel for your for your book? Are you ready? Okay, I'm going to turn it over to you. Ready? Yeah. So we have our guest here today, Parker Toronto. So Parker's going to talk about her book. This is a book that everyone needs. So Parker, over to you. You absolutely need this book if you have ever been in a portion of your life where you have either entered your you know your villain era if you have looked at somebody who said that you can't do something and you say watch me uh this is the book that you need if you've ever been you know alone at 12 a.m you know crying over everything that's happened during the day it's a very emotional book it's a very you know gets you out of reality book like you just you really need this book if you've kind of just thrown up your hands and you're like you know screw it i'm just going to do you know whatever there you go so that's it so we have the book we'll have all the links in the show notes for everyone please go over support parker let her know you heard about her, the, the book on the podcast let let parker know that you are supporting her and that you are here to buy this book, because we want everyone to go out and buy the book. Parker, thank you for being on Living the Next Chapter. I hope you go on many more podcasts, because you did a great job. And your cheering squad behind you, they did a great job as well. They're so well-behaved. Uh, so look at them. They're all passed out on the bed. It's awesome. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Parker, for being part of the podcast. Thank you for being here. You're very welcome. Awesome. Thank you for being part of Living the Next Chapter. Hey, look, at we're, we're having such a great time talking to authors around the world. If you are an author and you would like to be on this very show, I would love to talk to you. Livingthenextchapter.com, livingthenextchapter.com, livingthenextchapter.com is the best way to get in touch with us. There you'll find our social media and blah, 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 la di da and such. You, author, soon-to-be author, new author, currently writing your book author, published author, we need you here. The seat's empty. Microphone set up. We're waiting for you. Livingthenextchapter.com. We would love to have you on the podcast. Yeah, I am talking. I'm talking to you. Yeah, you should be here. See you at livingthenextchapter.com. <laughs>